So a, right, a women rights activist um, staged a peaceful protest in Anambra State on, I think it was May 11th, last week. Um, they were condemning the unwholesome widowhood practice of forcing a woman or a widow to drink the water used to wash the diseased corpse at a community at Atani Ogwari local government in Anambra State. Um, many know that a lot of um, communities have condemned this practice for many years. And interestingly, um, the, the suspect, um, I have his name here, I think it was Mr. Let me get the name. He was actually arrested, Mr. Albert Eligwe. He was a suspect and a native of Atani Ogwano local government. And he was um, arrested and um, arraigned on a five count charge before the Children, Sexual and Gender Based Violence Court in Oka. Um, it was a bailable offense of 500,000, so he, he paid the bill and he left. Um, um, but also, but aside from the fact that we're happy he was arrested, and he, though the proceedings have started in court, the issue now is more of the reorientation of the practice. So, yes, activists, community groups, women rights activists have done what they can to get a policy in place to criminalize this act. But the people are yet to accept and understand that it is illegal or it is wrong to continue such practices. But according to the activists, in some communities, it's still widely practiced. Mm. So we need much more than just moving a policy Nigeria is one thing to do policy and nothing to be implemented. So yes, this might serve as a deterrent, but the real change is the people seeing the, um, the, 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 um, the unhuman effect of this. What are your thoughts on, on the fact that this practice is still ongoing in various communities in Anambra State especially? Okay, so um, I've seen that um, <coughs> practice firsthand coming from that uh, mm. part of yes, I've seen that happen. And <coughs> at the time, I didn't understand what was going on. But from the little understanding I had about the practice, it's not meted out to men. It's just a practice against women. And, um, you know, for every man that dies in the family, whether it's husband or uncle or something, there's always this suspicion that it's a woman that has killed this person. And for them to find out who has done that, they would have to, you know, do this practice just on the women to be sure that you did not kill your husband or you did not kill your How nephew. Does it work? So they wash the dead body, you know, like before um, mm. the mortuary Bombing. stuff. Yeah, yeah, they wash the corpse and ask you to drink the water from the washed corpse. So when you drink it and you are so, and you are you are guilty. the guilty person. You're supposed happened? to die or something okay. would happen to you. And I think they also add other concussions because I don't think they can get that from just washing the corpse. Mm -hmm. So they add other spiritual things mm -hmm. to the water. You drink it. If you're not guilty, you survive. If you're guilty, you, you die. either die or it's But interestingly, this is somebody, I met somebody who um, she was in her 60s many years ago, and we were just having a conversation, and she was saying that she actually had to drink that mm -hmm. water at the time. And it wasn't because they suspected her of killing. It was more of an honor to her dead husband. You know, it, was, yeah. it was more like, listen, just to, to show how much I love and I dedicated myself to you, I'm willing to sacrifice that. You know? So for her, it was, a, it was a honorable thing for her to do. And she didn't have an issue with this. It's, it's a practice that was a community. But now, I mean, she wouldn't want that to happen to her own daughters and everything. But Why now? it's something she... That, that was her understanding, understanding at, the at the time. So <laughs> that's why I'm always very, very weary of condemning what I don't understand. So she chose to drink it and made a it's positive excuse out of it. But that drinking is not done if there's no suspicion. And unfortunately, in those areas, there's always suspicion that is the woman that has killed. Mm. And that's why they do this. Mm. So maybe she just, you Men know, how, never asked. yes, you know, when things happen and you want to just see a positive outlook, not to feel bad about it, I, pro I, I think that's what probably happened to her. Mm -hmm. But it's a culture that, you know, like we say, culture is a way of life that mm -hmm. people devise to protect themselves. We have outgrown that. There are ways to find out who has killed right now without having to subject people to drinking the water from a corpse. So um, what I expect is some of the traditional rulers in some of, because every community has a leader. Yeah. They are enlightened to the best of my ability. They have people who have gone to school who are there. They should begin to review some of these practices. What are yeah. they doing in 2023? Yeah. Review the practice, say this is not working for me because even in that practice, rich people don't go through it. Mm. They pay a fine. So why don't you make it as general? Um, if we suspect this one, so you will find you first, then we'll probably start out an investigation 
properly, we go to the police, you know, we do autopsy to determine some of these mm. things so that you don't subject people to... Do you know the, um, the effects of drinking something that has been washed from a dead body? Do you know the effects medically? Mm -hmm. So we should have this conversation. The leaders of the community should have this conversation and say, let us change this. We can swap it. We can exchange right, it. So let me, the let me go to the, um, so, the, the lady, Miss Hope Okoye. She's the journalist, one of the, not journalist, she was one of activity, the protesters yeah. um, that was speaking. She said the peaceful um, demonstration is only a way to make the women's voices heard, mm. as well as the clarion call to Aguari communities to review the existing obnoxious traditions mm. and expunge all forms of harmful practices against women, harmful. all when meaning indigenous of Ogbaru mm. and indeed a number of states, both home and, and abroad, abroad yeah. should lend their voices in speaking against every form of ill treatment against women and widows. Yeah. And that's why the ladies of your view are also joining our voices Boys, yeah. to support Ms. Okoye in saying that we must expunge yeah. this uh, negative practice. Yeah, so I, I, I understand also when you're not from a particular place to not go in criticizing without understanding. So I understand that point of view. But we have had this conversation long enough to know that even people from that community, this is something that they see um, as a weapon that is used against women, yeah. against the vulnerable. And that's the sad thing about you know, some of our traditions that ha uh, have not meant, that do not benefit us in any way. That um, as it's phasing out, it's a small cluster of people still hold on to it as a way to bully or punish the uh, more vulnerable people in their communities. The people who are poor, widows, orphans, they're the ones that suffer things like that. Yeah. And so that's why we're joining our voices because we now understand it's not about tradition, but it's about weaponizing tradition and bullying people, people that we think do not have a voice or do not have influence. And so me, I'm joining them as well, all of us, and saying that it is not right, it is unfair. And, um, you know, there's something that you mentioned, Mariah, which is, yes, we have policies, but also we need to have people who are willing to change their mindset and understand that the reason why we now have these new policies is also to protect them. Everybody. Because what I know with many Nigerians, we understand the policy, we understand what it means, then you, maybe you now go to the village, they'll say, hey, you and those your... Um, city things or foreign things. This is how it is done, done here. here. And you see people who are educated and exposed, all of a sudden they become monsters oh, in really? a small community. And I'm wondering, you know, why do we, you know, why, why do we do that? And who are the people who can stand up for these women in the local communities? Okay, that's why traditional let's, leaders let's talk have about to be called. For a second, because I know on this table we've always been advocates for um, not totally removing our traditions and everything. You know that we have to somewhat reformed them of these cultures because mm. that's what sets us apart from any other nation in the world, our mm. cultures, practices, and traditions. And we've also tried to understand that there are ways of doing things that we, we don't, even we don't know about. So, for example, somebody could argue that it's a way for helping women to be faithful. If I know that, if something happens to my husband, for example, maybe if you cheat on your husband, something, maybe you frustrate your spouse to the point where they die or this is based on your nagging that pushes him to the point where something happens to him and he's unable to cater for his family and his entire generation, his family, you know, is a, is a sort of deterrent to help a woman to be wholesome, to be faithful, to be pious, so that your job is to be a helpmate. Okay. Help this man to succeed so that nothing happens to him because God forbid something happens to him, you will drink the water that's his body. So okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of system that's been put in place to help women. That's how it started so to stay faithful. in 1500s. But thankfully, there's no, we're not in 1500s anymore. We have a justice system. Yes. We have the police. Mm. We have counselors. For heaven's sakes, we even have religion that Nigerians have carried above anything that we believe. You know, and since, we're, since Anambra State right now is the um, conversation, we know that many people from the East are devout Catholics. They believe in <coughs> Jesus Christ. They mm -hmm. understand about the love of God and forgiveness. And also, you know, um, where you go to, 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 for, for the forgiveness of your sins, they understand going to your, your priest and telling your sins and God will forgive you. They also understand that if, you, if whatever your crime is so big, they know where the police station is. They know where the courts are. It is not about that tradition. That's what I said. It is about weaponizing tradition against the vulnerable. That's what this conversation is about. When there, there was no other system but that traditional system, we understood. It made sense. 
but it doesn't make sense anymore. It doesn't make sense anymore because we know that there are people who are waiting for, they are like the devil, waiting for who to devour, who to accuse and then use this tradition to punish them. Oh, I asked you to do this for me. I wanted your land. I wanted something. Oh, you decided not to marry me. We married someone. I would see how I use tradition against you. That has happened. If you think the person has killed your brother or has killed your husband, take the person to court. Let them catch the person. Let the police come let and catch come the person. Let me come to that. Let them go to court. That's exactly what I was going to say. Because, I mean, we all... Let me use um, <laughs> the Sheon Kuti story, for example. Every <clears> day we criticize many people for bad behavior. Mm -hmm. And when the Sheon Kuti episode happened, we amongst ourselves, we discussed, like, are you sure? How do we even approach this? <laughs> because he's like family. You know, it's like saying, oh, your brother slapped somebody on the road, and then you're having to condemn him publicly. It's the same thing, like... If it's, a, if, it's a, if it's a brother who is so close to you that his wife allegedly maybe killed a lot of people, this they are enlightened, you know, this is not how we do things. Kia, kia, you have a 360. Mm. She be, this her, be. Let her drink the, 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 the body. She must drink that water. She must drink it. She must drink it to pee. Hello. Because you are very, very sure Hello, that it was man. that wife that killed. So when, the, when it affects us, mm. We somewhat try to change it in our mind. It's easier to say when it is them. Oh, it is them. That the ones like oh, this is bad practice. But the moment it comes close to home, you see these same Nigerians who are living in Canada. Yeah. It is that one that is living in Canada. That one is like, that stand Tell her to drink that thing. Let us prove that she's not the one. So whether we like it or not, are we being sincere in our acceptance or rejection of our culture and our traditions? Human beings will always be human beings, mm -hmm. and that means they will always be selfish, and you <laughs> cannot take it away from them. And that is why we advocate that we have a system that puts checks and balances across board so that when it is your turn and you are saying, oh, is my brother, or oh, is my sister, there's a system that you must go through irrespective. That is why the government must step in. Our leaders must step in. Our traditional rulers must step in to ensure that everybody is treated equally. Now, we have the, had this culture from patriarchy, which meant that the men were absolved because we have seen men who have killed their wives. Nobody asked them to drink the water from because the cops. Men own women. Yes, because men own women. <laughs> and we're saying this has got to stop. Anybody can die of any uh, cause. It could be natural causes, it could be anything. When you suspect that somebody has done this, why don't you go through the proper channel? Because we end up giving people uh, um, the cops water to drink that are innocent. And we do not look through to the end to see the effects of you know, their health. We do not look through when somebody is mourning, there's a lot of mental issues going on at the time. We are not paying attention to their mental health. We're not paying attention to what they could have been going through. You're not paying attention to what they have lost or what they had lost. The, the companionship, the support you're supposed to give them at the time. You are more worried about who has killed what and who should be punished for what. It is a barbaric system. Well, with, without your respect, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, barbaric. let me punch that for a second. Uh, let me puncture that for a second because... It's part of the self-help solution. Because the truth is that if you put yourself this moment in a Gwaru community, the way you live, mm. you are there. The police station is probably far away for you or to not. report mm. or not. There, but the, for, for the sake of the conversation, okay. Okay. perhaps the police station is very far away. Perhaps you've been there several times for other issues. Nothing happened. Mm. Maybe the local government is already very ineffective. Mm. You are solving your problem the way your forefathers did. Yeah. You know, that's how you know it. So it's easy for us to be in the city and say, ah, how can people in that community do that? But the truth is, it's their reality. That's how they solve it. How they have to solve their problem. How do they ensure they put enough checks? So that men don't kill their wives, wives don't kill their husbands, children don't kill their parents. These are the little checks they put in to sustain their community. So who are we there for? To begin to condemn what we do not understand. Who are they there for? To become the judge and the jury. I thought they are supposed to leave it to the gods to find out. Why are we playing the gods? Yes, we want to go to culture, let's do it the right way. Leave it to the gods. If the gods talk to an Ezemmo, and he comes with his stick and says, I saw this person, this and this is what he said. It's different. You are the one accusing. You are the one judging. You are the judge and the jury. Who gave you that right? That's a human being. So we must be considerate. And now we are in an enlightened environment. There is no state in this country that does not have a government. No matter how far it is, when you need some things, you go there. 
you locate it. You get it. There's no state in this country that will say they don't have cars, they don't have bicycles, they don't have motorcycles mm -hmm. to go to the government or go to the police. There is no state in this country. We are constantly evolving and we are saying, as human beings, we must begin to see differently. We must begin to evolve into the humanity we are created here for. Gone are the days where we had to use crude measures mm -hmm. because we knew less. We did not understand it. So now that we are becoming, we are, we are opening our eyes to understand that we are all human beings. We must love yeah. and respect ourselves. We should find better ways to do things. Yeah. And that's where we bring it, the, the touchlight again to the local government, yeah. the community leaders. Mm. They are the ones that are mm. guilty. Not this, uh, this Mr. Is this Mr. Albert or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. not the one that is guilty. It's the fact that there's nobody in the, the Bali, I don't know if there's Bali, the chiefs or mm. the Igwes of the communities. We they are not up. taking responsibility of reorientation the responsibility of re-educating people and exposing them that there's a new law because the man was arrested. Yeah. He, it's billable, 500,000 naira. The, the, the proceedings will still go to court. So there's a policy. Government has oh. done their own part. Government has done their part. It's now left for the people who can self-govern themselves so that to begin to change the mindset. That will take years. Mm. Well, that will take years and then it will also take um, um, <coughs> policies and... Um, what I don't want, punishments. Yeah. So we have traditional leaders, they are called. I know that government does that. I know that um, NGOs sit down with community leaders to educate them about things like that and mm -hmm. how it affects their people, humanity, and things like that. So we're now talking about people who are mm -hmm. stubborn, who are saying, I don't care what you say, mm -hmm. this is what I'll do. But the sad thing is, as I said before, is that they only use it against other people. They never mm. use it for themselves. Just women. So for me, that 500,000 fine is too small. You know, it's not about the money. I feel that anybody, they may have even put that 500,000 on the side. For when they come to catch me, we pay it and we go back to do what we want to do. We call the traditional leaders in that community that allowed for that to happen and make your traditional leader face some sort of punishment or consequences for what you have done. Tomorrow, that traditional leaders will not, under his nose, that sort of thing will not happen. Yeah. Right. Other people have to be held responsible. <clears throat> you cannot stand and watch people being dehumanized, and you're supposed to be a leader in that community yeah, and get care. away with it. No. If, and, and, you know, that's how we handle things generally in Nigeria. We don't want to punish some people because they hold a particular office or they hold a particular position or they are brothers. That's the only way sometimes, after having spoken to them, put the policy in place, cajoled them, pampered them, the other way is to hold the rod and say to them, if you don't change, these are the proper consequences for it. And really, for women, let us be each other's keepers. Yeah. Let us speak up for it, women, because usually this culture and these traditions is always against women and orphans and mm -hmm. children. Right. Women have to stand up for each other and protect each other. And that's why it's so important. That's why we, when we saw this story, we had to lend our voices with Miss Okoye. She's at the forefront of this. Um, and we had to just join forces. And she's also calling on, um, on members of that community across the world, wherever they are, they must be able to speak up against these practices. It is wrong. And the more we speak against it, the more... And that's why I love about your view. We, we have created a platform for women to speak and express their views. So yeah. that is what we're going to be doing. Let's take a few comments on social media as we wrap up on this. Um, any thoughts? Our YouTube uh, is not showing. Um, we have... I have quite a few. Um, Theophilus Babatunde says, that woman, okay, that woman in the middle gets sense very well. I love all of them, but I always submit to her statement. More elbow to you, ma. <laughs> um, Andrew Stratham says, this practice is backward. This way you can say it would have been right and just for the colonial administrator at the time to lock up that backward practice. Mm -hmm. um, we have Frank of Scandi says, can someone please update me on the opinion? Prof. Imonaka Enakena says, the incoming government should diversify the economy. That must be <coughs> the other topic. Mm -hmm. Allow total deregulation of the petroleum sector. Get eggheads to curb the inflationary pressures and devious rule policies that is birthing a galloping inflation. Death of our refineries, stifling of, and so many more. And Adinio Adibaya says, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of those things that must not be done. All right, so we have to wrap up. I think um, the, the conversation goes back to the various levels of governance. And I think from a previous story, it was more of what um, government, state governments can do to improve the lives of Nigerians so that we don't have to keep 
asking or um, resorting to only God mm. to provide for us. Salaries must be paid by state governments, and state governments get salaries not just from federal allocation, but by grooming creative and generating revenue. And we're hoping that the new administration and the leadership mm. that we hope to have on May 29th mm. will set the pace, set the tone, set the agenda yes. for other governors to begin to make um, um, economic decisions mm. to help Nigerians on one end. Mm. The second topic was about... Um, Practices going back to the another level of governance, which is the local governments and community leaders. Yeah. Yes, there's so much to state government has good. Even um, the human rights activists have gone to ensure that the policy has been put in place. But it's beyond policy making. It's now for the people themselves to understand these practices are uh, dehumanizing and must be stopped. And this is something that must be done when we have first ladies. Wives of uh, uh, commissioners of uh, Rishi in the various states, um, the wives of the local government chairman, these are the kinds of things they do to continually re educate yeah. people on, on, on how to make, um, to, to how, on how, on how to have, have better practices of, um, of checking um, malpractices amongst, amongst, amongst Nigerians. Either way, as Bisi said, we have a government in all our states, and that's the government's job is to protect the people. And that's what we hope that we don't across from top to bottom.